chapel or a sound system that caters not only for all of us to hear better, but especially for the hearing impaired to hear better. Even a handrail, even a handrail for aging presiders. <laughs> Speak to the... Not for you. <laughs> Speak to the attention to detail and the mission that, that Father took us on. For all of this, we thank you. We wish you Godspeed. Good luck. Thanks, Thank you. I feel it, staff member. But because I'm the oldest, <laughs> and outside of Juanita Tamayo, I have been on the staff the longest, 14 years. I also get to speak on behalf of the uh, pastoral care ministry that I coordinate for the parish. And there's a third reason I get to speak, because I am Italian. And we all know Italians like to talk, and loudly. Okay. So during my 14 years on staff, I got the experience of six different pastors. Can you name them? <laughs> Certainly Father Bob, still active in his retirement, Father Brito, Father Bill, Friar Bob, Father Mike, Father Flaherty, no I wasn't here with him, and last but not least, Father Joe. So since I'm speaking on behalf of the entire staff, I decided to canvas other staff members in my head and to ask what their parting words would be to you. So the consensus is, we love you, Joe. <laughs> and seriously, you have been an authentic witness to how to live a true Christian life. Always gracious and kind, and gentle, humble, truly a person with no sharp edges, for which we are always grateful. And though you admit to administration not being your strong suit, on occasion you were a good administrator. <laughs> Elusive at times, we learned to track you down by listening to you humming or whistling through the rectory halls. When we did catch up with you, it was worth the chase. <laughs> so the pastoral care ministers have also witnessed to your caring for our sick and dying and those in need. That obviously is your strong suit. And what we appreciate most about you, your spirit of loving service and commitment to your priestly calling. Thank you, Joan. It's difficult to let you go, knowing that you will always be a part of us, even as you officially serve elsewhere. God bless. And uh, James holhauser Trukas is next. Um, we, we thank you, and we don't know how um, oftentimes to express that gratitude. Since about three years ago, you did something brave. You brought four parishes together um, under one roof uh, and formed United Catholic Youth Ministries. Um, and you and you yes, the, you yeah. um, and since then you have been our fearless, patient, uh, funny um, guide. Um, I remember there's a great picture in case anybody wants to see it at some point because it's always going to be there of uh, Father Tito and I um, at NCYC, which is a national conference, and Father Tito has his little sunglasses on and he's throwing up a peace sign. He looks very youthful. And uh, it's a great image of who Father Tito has been for us. Um, for me in the five years he's been here, as I realized in March, I'm in my seventh year here at St. Nick's. Um, uh, but to all of our youth and young adults, you have helped us uh, come forward in this parish at St. Athanasius, at St. Joan of Arc, and St. Mary's. Um, and okay, so hi, I'm Nick Miles. I represent the Finance Committee. Um, we're the number crunchers. Um, we're merely a sounding board, um, checks and balances, 
on what Father on what on what Father Tito and other committees and groups are wanting to do with the finances here at St. Nick's. Um, Father Tito, thank you for all the context you've given us over the years um, on the various initiatives that are going on uh, to teach who Christ is uh, the capital camp that capital capital campaign for all of your guidance and insights into the inner workings of the archdiocese helping us understand how those how things work there um, your workings with pope john 23rd school the local parishes and all the other churches in evanston thank you for your patience and your kindness you have shown keeping us focused on the importance of ministry and using our financial resources to best serve those ministries here at st nick's um, I think family favorite story now but we are so blessed to know you I didn't get enough time with you I will miss you and I you're not getting rid of me and I've got a couple of my esteemed colleagues here to present an award on behalf of parish council Cinnamon. Thank you, students. Almost summertime. And we have a surprise guest joining us. Bishop Nicholas is here. Bishop Nicholas. Where are you? He's not here. You have a message from him. Oh, okay. Yes, on occasion I have been mistaken for the good bishop, but as it would have it, as Nancy and I were getting ready to leave, I got a phone call from Bishop Nicholas because he sent his regrets that he couldn't be here in person, but he wanted to send a message to Father Joe. And he wanted to tell Father Joe that he is so proud to have had him as the shepherd of the parish that bears his name. You know, the good bishop's remains reside in the land of Italia. Yeah, and, uh, and he's proud to have his remains there too, you know, his, uh, his relics. Um, but he, he wanted us to remember that if anyone expresses the love of children the way St. Nicholas did, if anyone has embodied the compassion for the poor and the needy the way St. Nicholas did, if anyone has poured himself out till it hurts, if anyone has given of himself freely and endlessly, it's been good father Joseph Tito. And in the name, in the name of Saint Nicholas, may you always go forth embodying that spirit 
and being a light to all that you meet. Amen. Salen desde lo más profundo de mi corazón para hacer este gran homenaje a quien honor merece, como lo es nuestro gran sacerdote, Father Joseph Tito. Padre, esto no es un adiós, esto no es un adiós, ni mucho menos una despedida para siempre. Usted sabe que en esta comunidad de San Nicolás siempre tendrá su casa. Mi casa es tu casa. Y la casa a la que me, me refiero es la más bonita, la más sincera, la que está llena de amor, de ese amor de Dios que infundió para siempre que es el templo del Espíritu Santo. Nuestro corazón de cada uno de todos nosotros. Quiero decirle y recordarle todos los grandes cambios que usted hizo en colaboración con la comunidad de muchos voluntarios que esperaban cambios y que gracias a Dios que lo envió a usted para ello. Y muchos de esos cambios fueron físicos y espirituales, como la transformación de la capilla en su reconstrucción, pues estaba muy destruida y ya solo se usaba como almacén para las roommate cells. La reconstrucción del campanario de la iglesia mayor, los sonidos y la estabilidad del altar en ciertos tiempos litúrgicos y muchas otras cosas más que se hicieron en su estadía por San Nicolás. A pesar de los tiempos difíciles que estamos pasando por la pandemia, usted nunca, pero nunca se cansaba y seguía y seguía con esa actitud positiva que lo caracteriza. Y eso es lo que nosotros, los que llevamos y vivimos el amor de Dios, que usted nos transmitió. Queremos recordarlo así, con su alma peregrina y de reconstrucción. Lo que estaba caído física y espiritualmente lo reconstruía. También, gracias por ser como es, muy atento con su comunidad. Pues como decía el Papa Francisco, usted sí olía a oveja, usted sí salía a las periferias, a cuidar su rebaño. Por todo esto, queremos darle las gracias a nombre de toda la comunidad de San Nicolás. Y personalmente, quiero decirle gracias por permitirme levantar el cáliz de la salvación por estos años que compartimos juntos el altar. Y por su paciencia conmigo. Quiero decir... Arturo, that was all improvisation. He was the only one there, but he did it with great spirit and great love. We saw that connecting with people was so much your true gift. It was a huge gift to us on that cold winter afternoon and ultimately with the whole parish to feel your oneness with us. So one last song in that musical is called Goodbye Until Tomorrow. We never say goodbye here. All are welcome at St. Nicholas always. Thank you for being part of the rich fabric of our community. Please remain with us in prayer and come back to worship with us and to have some fun. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. Gosh. I was coming here, St. Mary's, than with a, a multi-parish school. So new things to learn. And so Father Tito, as a good mentor, as a good brother, as a good friend, he took me under his wing and we
had so much fun walking it together. And so he showed me how to be a pastor, someone who had been at a, a place that had a school. All the energy that comes from that, the energy that flows out of a school and goes into a parish. But he also showed me how to be a pastor, how to be a shepherd, how to be a good friend. And so my connections with him it was on a weekly basis. We'd come over, we'd go into the classrooms, we'd uh, go to the religion classes. And it was amazing to see how a good shepherd he was. Going to whatever age classroom we were at, he was able to, to hone in at that proper level and to draw faith out of people. People who were a little shy about being a little resident about sharing their faith. And he'd always end up with great humor and also great humility. So I learned a lot in those five years from that. But also then, we would then go to uh, uh, Mrs. Hulse's uh, office and then to Dr. Cinnamon's office afterwards. And then we'd get caught up in what's happening around the school and around the parish. And those were all fun, joyful times because it was always involved with laughter and also goodwill. And so then also, it was great that he was so involved in the area too, being part of the, the deanery of all the, the six parishes in the area. We would get together on a, a monthly basis. Or we would get, had our cluster meetings at, and uh, we would rotate at the different uh, uh, parishes for lunch. It was just that goodwill of knowing how to be together. And so with Father Joe, anytime I needed help in whatever, just to walk, work through a problem, just to see what is your perspective, it was always available. Sometimes the hardest thing was to try to catch him. So if I caught him in the parking lot, I never let go. <laughs> but he was always has always been that good brother in that. So so again, I want to say thank you for being that good friend, that good brother, that good shepherd of teaching me how to how to be a good and faithful Catholic. I wish you well as you go down to Holy Name. He'll be down with my predecessor at St. Mary's, Father Greg Sackwich, which many of you would know uh, through, you've seen him on TV. But I do have to warn you, you will hear his jokes many times, over and over and over. So prepare your smile and your laughter now. So, so but God bless you, and I know we will not be parted. Thank you for, for the wonderful journey. Pastors at the parish do something I frankly could never do in public, and that's dance. <laughs> Father Oldershaw has a certain dance he can do primarily in church, but also at the parish carnival. Father Tachuk, he, was, he could dance. But you have set, Joe, a new standard for both the amount, the intensity, and the, and the flair of dancing in this parish. And, A thing that's constant at St. Nicholas, at least in my experience here, is the, is the uh, how, many, how do I want to word this one? I'm going to be in my best behavior here. Um, administrative flexibility around mass schedule. And what that translates is, this man has the ability to change who's going to preside, who's going to hear confessions, and who's going to preach on two minutes notice flat. And um, some people it drives them crazy. I really rather enjoy it because you never quite know what's going to happen or who's going to do what. And yeah, it works well. Last thing I want to say is I really hope that on this feast of Corpus Christi um, that you catch a, a St. Augustine saying, for St. Augustine, he's different than lots of other people. And he said the food and drink that people share in a situation like this are every bit as important as the Eucharistic table. Now, not everybody agrees with that, but St. Augustine said that, so I agree with it, <laughs> yeah, more or less. I just hope and pray that you hear and hear the affection and, and the respect and the care that's being uh, shown to you today. And take it with you to the cathedral, and thank you for tolerating me, and Godspeed to you, okay? God bless. Uh, about what this is about. I said, easy, Joe. I'm number eight, you're number 11, pastors of this parish. So from then on, it's been ocho and once. And we could do a little song and dance on that one, Joe. But uh, so that's one thing. The other things, I first met Joe when I was in Morelia, and he, 
And uh, he was on the eve of ordination. It was going to be ordained in the next year or two, I think. And and uh, I had been around for a while, so I was trying to learn Spanish. And uh, well, anyway, I was trying. And uh, but uh, it was uh, it was good to be to meet him there. And then, of course, uh, you know, there's a, I have a few stories on Holy Name Cathedral that I'll spare you too. But I spent eight years there, and. Uh, Sackowitz, uh, Greg was not there at that time. I agree about the stories, but uh, anyway, you'll love it. Uh, but not half as much, well, no, you'll love it. This, it's just that this is a unique experience here, as you know, as you've said, you know, passionate and intense, and we can think of other <laughs> adjectives to, but all these years. You know, coming here has been uh, a formation, really, for me, being here these five years. And I hope that uh, I have allowed myself, in the Holy Spirit, to really be able to be formed, to be pliable, like that image of the potter uh, and the clay. And, uh, yes, being formed hurts sometimes, huh? I mean, you feel the pressure, but the result is always beyond expectation. Uh, you know, I, I just, I guess I'm so grateful at this moment uh, just to realize that we can share so much together from our hearts. And this is unusual to so this kind of really deep sharing back and forth, both not only for me, but for us as a community, uh, because hopefully, um, I'm just reflecting what I've been, how I've been formed with all of you. I hope that's clear as well. Um, so the, the way you've helped to help me to be a pastor, it's not just like a mold, but it's this free form clay on the wheel, and the wheel keeps spinning, and here spinning very rapidly. <laughs> and yet the, the potter can still form in the process. Huh? Uh, and so I really want to thank you for uh, helping to form me as a person, uh, as a Christian, uh, as a priest, and, and I will always carry that shape of St. Nicholas with me in my heart. Uh, it will always, that's there. That's just there with me. And, you know, I'm glad it is. I'm glad it is. Uh, it's not easy to leave uh, today. It's especially difficult because we have not done this and got, have gotten together. And it's, you know, there's a sadness in just knowing that I won't walk in the same direction uh, with you, but you'll be here in my heart. Uh, you know, and I'm just very grateful and uh, joyful at the same time uh, of the great spirit that is here and this body and blood. Uh, I did quote Thomas Aquinas this morning. I didn't quote Augustine, but I'll keep that in mind. Because <laughs> it is true. It is true. I do realize that in the sharing even of simple food, uh, we are the body and blood of Christ, uh, not only at the altar. So, uh, thank you so much. Gracias por sus palabras en este en este día. Es un poquito embarazado de escucharlo, pero soy muy agradecido también en el momento. So, gracias a toda la comunidad de San Nicolás por mis años aquí y por su formación en mi corazón y mi alma, con mi sacerdocio, con mi vida cristiana. Muchas gracias. To continue to do your work in the world and we ask your blessing upon our parish those of us gathered here today and those uh, in our homes who are not yet able to go out those who couldn't be here today as we take this next step in our parish journey together we ask all of this in your name amen, amen. all right nancy come on up here you all know the chicken dance
Thank you all for coming. Enjoy.